Opus 55, the Eroica Symphony by Beethoven. Ideally dedicated to Napoleon, written around 1804, and a symphony which changed the way the world thought about symphonic music. It is without a doubt, in my mind, one of the landmarks in symphonic writing for large numbers of reasons. Let's start with the first two bars, which are those two chords at the beginning of the symphony tell us we're in the key of E flat major. But with Beethoven, it wasn't always so. When he wrote his first symphony, he said it would be symphony number one in C. But he begins like this, he begins with a cadence into F and then goes with a different sort of cadence into A minor and then So when you're dealing with Beethoven, you're dealing with a highly original mind. The second symphony in D major is much more classical than the Eroica, but it's the Eroica number three that started the world thinking about how symphonic style was working. But Beethoven uses everything about classicism that makes this music work. And it's the idea of the motive. And we straight away in bar three hear the motive. Now the interesting thing about that motive is there's a dodgy note. It's the note which shocked everybody at the first hearing and it's very easy to hear. And it's there and he puts it on a crescendo and it's a C sharp. Now that is useless information other than it's the pivotal idea of the symphony when it starts to change keys and starts to develop in the middle. Accompanying that, we have strings going. There's nothing terribly interesting about a group of strings going. Until you get to the C sharp, that pattern becomes. we get a syncopated effect. So right from the beginning, Beethoven gives us a catalogue of rich ideas which are going to unfold in the most extraordinary way. Let's take the syncopation. He treats the syncopation by, through a series of sforzandi. Now, conventionally, those sforzandi are often played expressively, so they're My view is, that we should play them a little louder than that and shorter so that we play so the tension in the music unfolds in a very particular way. I also am going to introduce the concept that this symphony depends entirely on the idea of a two bar phrase. So everything in my view in this music goes in two bar blocks. So one, two, three, two, two, three. One, two, three, two, two, three. One, two, three, two, two, three. One, two, three, and so on. There is so much in this music to discover, so much which Beethoven brought to the world, which the world found extremely disturbing. He was very, very roundly criticised for this particular work. It was too long, which is a funny expression. Too long for what? It had too many notes. What on earth does that mean? There was more material introduced towards the end of the first movement. What's wrong with that? The world has always resisted change. And when you put change in the hands of a genius who was going deaf, writing music, we have an extraordinarily volatile cocktail of the most amazing things with music. Do be there to find out about Beethoven's Opus 55, the Eroica. I'll be delving into that with the Melbourne Symphony Orchestra when you come to Ears Wide Open. <laughs>